Jacob Marcy just continues to crush the Arizona Fall League. We'll discuss on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on a Saturday, November 4th. I am Frank Stample, joined by Chris the Welsh. And we're doing a little Back to the Future thing right now because technically we are together in person, but we are recording this podcast in advance. Let's talk about some Arizona Fall League updates. We see guys come out hot every year in this league. The question is whether, whether or not they can keep it up. Jacob Marcy, an outfield prospect with the Padres, has done exactly that. At the time of recording this, he is batting 420. he He's got four home runs, 14 steals, a 1287 OPS, also has 17 walks in 86 plate appearances. I know we already spoke about him a few weeks ago, but he's kept it up, and I, I think this might increase his chances of earning an opportunity in 2024. I completely agree. Leading the AFL in OPS, leading in hits, leading in doubles, leading in stolen bases, second most walks. Those are absurd numbers. And this isn't, you know, listen, there are older players that come here and dominate. There can be really bad pitching. Um, there are guys, you know, there's 26 year olds that are kind of starting to pop a little bit here. This is just not the case for Jacob Marcy. This is just opportunity. The thing that's been one of the most impressive for me He's hitting lefties. Uh, three of the four homers that I have seen in person have come off of lefties. And they have two of them happened in one game. Daniel Lynch with the Royals, who I think made the majors. Daniel Lynch just did a random start out here. Jacob Marcy took him, uh, absolutely demolished him uh, left field. And the two homers he hit were against lefties as well. He can spray the ball across all fields. You know, you're, this isn't a guy that you're going to have be pull happy on or, you know, whatever shifting you can possibly do now. He can hit it to all fields. He shows real power, monster speed, good ability for contact. He's a really solid defense. He's doing literally everything. He has 14 stolen bases. He's been caught once out here. I believe the record is 17 stolen bases in an AFL. He might crush that. There's a lot of hype around Jacob Marcy, but he is not just doing one or two things really well. He's doing all of them really well hitting lefties, moving the ball around. I think you have to consider him as an option, at least the Padres do, whether it's with them or in a big trade. I would be buying on Jacob Marcy because I just don't think the hype is quite caught up, even though this is a very weird time and people get hyped up prospects. Jacob Marcy, 0% rostered in CBS League. So I know there are some dynasty leagues on CBS. If he's out there in your league, you got an open bench spot. Take a shot. Let's see where it goes with Jacob Marcy. Aaron Sabato is a power hitting prospect for the Twins, and he was a first round pick in 2020. He actually hit a double dong on Monday, both of those coming off of Darius Fines, who pitched with the Atlanta Braves this season. The problem for Sabato is more of the same low batting average. Big strikeouts, 36% strikeout rate so far in the AFL. Uh, Welsh, is there any hope here, or is it? Just the strikeouts are too big of an issue. I mean, I'd never say that there's no hope. Uh, I I think Aaron Spot is like a fun guy. He's taking this seriously out here. You're seeing the power. But, you know, as I mentioned, there are some time there's just players that are just primed to do specific things out here with kind of a worse pitching market. Uh, though Darius Vines, I saw him pitch a really great game, and that's not nothing. He's not doing any of the new exceptional things that you would want out of him. He still has a really low batting average. He's still striking out like the second most in the AFL he's tied for. So those are my worries. If he were not striking out a bunch, maybe walking more, hitting 290, 300, we could say, oh, hey, maybe there's something there. I don't care that he's leading in homers here. He's hitting 222. Half of his hits are home runs. Ballparks can be a little bit smaller out here, pitching a little bit worse. Ball flies a little bit more in Arizona. I would, if I had to be aggressive on one side, I would say there is nothing here for Aaron Sabato, but it's a good sign to see the power developing even when the average isn't. All right. A name that we haven't heard much about recently is arguably the top prospect there, and it's Colson Montgomery with the Chicago White Sox. He is hitting just 254, three homers, 755 OPS. At the time of recording this, he has 20 strikeouts, a 28.5% strikeout rate. Uh, is there anything that you've seen that actually makes you worried, Welsh? Is it kind of like a small sample size, or 
you know, our guys just kind of getting tired at this time of year. What do you think about Colson Montgomery? Yeah, maybe I'm making excuses. I kind of feel like he's getting kind of tired. I think he's come here to be hyper aggressive. He's not walking. He has a sub 300 OBP. He's striking out a decent amount, but I have seen him just be super hyper aggressive. He definitely, when he gets a hold of him, it's like 110 plus. So the EVs are there, the body's there, the swing is there. Maybe some of the decision making isn't there. Maybe he is just trying to be a bit more aggressive. I've seen that from quite a few players. I tend to, it's a very average stat line. I tend to say that there's nothing there outside of the things we want him to do. He's doing, I don't like the strikeouts, but I also just think he's trying to be hyper aggressive. So I wouldn't worry. And if someone is a buying opportunity for Colson Montgomery. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the fantasy baseball today podcast on Spotify, Apple podcast, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to fantasy baseball today in five. And we'll be back again next week. Bye-bye. 